There's about 900,000 sworn law enforcement officers in the United States, okay? So when we say the police, what we're talking is 900,000 people. So this goes with what Gianna said, goes with what Connor said. This is like, you have 900,000 people. Fill up Beaver Stadium nine times. Nine, nine times. That's a lot of people. There's a lot of jerks who are going to be there, right? I mean, you, you, know, you understand, 900,000. So then the question is like, so who are these 900,000 people? And I'm going to say, well, I can't, this is not my, this isn't systematic. I'm not, I'm pulling this out of my observation in my life up till now, right? And my observation and understanding of police. So I, I'm, I will be really curious about what any of you think about this. But um, one are just social workers. Please, I, th- I mean, my experience of police, mind you, I, this isn't what I study, but, I, but I've ta- I have s- had so many conversations with police officers, right? It's like it's social workers, man, it's people. They like, they want to, what do social workers do? They want to help people, right? They want to step in. Wait, wait, Hank, why do you want to be a cop? Um, personally, ever since I was a child, I just wanted to be one. Like, I literally walked up to one and I was like, I want to be just like you when I was little. Um, but like, I think with the whole social worker thing, it's like, I mean, police officers put their life on the line to help people, Uh no matter who they are. And they're willing to give up their own lives for someone else. Uh Uh-huh. And that's that's why I want to. That's why you want to do it. Like, I'm willing to put my life on the line for someone that really needs help. So, so it's the social worker thing, right? You want to help people. Yeah. And you're, not only do you want to help people, you will only put yourself on the line. Mm-hmm. Are you into guns or are you just going to tolerate um, guns? I'm into them. I've only gone to the range once, but I'm full in support for them. Okay. So, yeah, you're from, wait, where'd you say you're from? Florida? I'm from South Florida, so Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, okay. Uh, Miami area. So that's not like as, gun, as much of a gun culture as in the north, well, but. It is, yeah. but not in the way you think. Yeah, oh, all right. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, so that idea, the social worker idea, is, it's, but it holds true for you, right? Why, why is your father a police officer? Um, so he was actually a Marine for a few years, and then he came back, and he was a police officer in a different county, and then eventually came to our county because it was like a little bit of a better lifestyle for what he wanted and he has always been the kind to want to risk his life to save somebody else he wants to help people he's been into guns um he also does another thing called cert which is basically like SWAT Uh team for our area and so when and he's in charge of that and um so when there's more dangerous situations that they won't always call just the police officers too they actually call the cert team out and so he'll do more things like that involves like shootouts or somebody yeah, yeah. potentially like trying to shoot themselves. Like, um, so he's just always been one to like, I feel like he almost likes the thrill that he wants to risk okay. his life to save others. Okay. Yeah. So there's something about that. So like the, so the social worker thing though, work that fits also, right? Connor, how about you? I mean, it was kind of like the same. I've always wanted to be a cop and then, through my negative experiences, I kind of develop, you know, my mom is Caribbean black, so she's very if and or but about it. There's no debating with her. So after those experiences and after I told her I want to be a cop, I got, I got stuff thrown at me. She was like, you're kind of crazy for that. You can do so much other things. Why would you want to do that? Uh-huh. And relatively... I, I said to her, it's because what, this, the same thing as they said, I wanted to help people that needed help, people that uh, don't have the opportunities that I'm given now that may be in a uh, almost worse part in their life in the future where I could help them with okay. what I'm getting from here now. Okay, so, so, but, but in addition, you have another piece of you that wants to actually change policing, right? So it's like, yeah. I want to help people, but I also want to reform it. Yeah. I've had experiences, and I want, to, I want yeah. to do something, right? Whereas for the two of you, that's not, that's, not prim- that's not primary, right, in the same kind of way. Okay, all right. Well, so listen, 
you got the, the social worker mentality. It's the same with the military, by the way. I don't know how much time you all, I mean, everyone knows some people in the military. I've actually, you know, just in my life, have had many opportunities to sit down with many, many, many soldiers, and not only in the United States, but from around the world. And it's a very similar thing. People want to protect others. It's a, it's a part, it's a, it's a personality characteristic that really, you know, it's like, you'll know it when you have a child and you want to protect your child, but you just extend that out to lots of other people. So it's very similar, right? And then you got the police, it's just, they're just workers. You know, they, yeah, they were, the, the police department was in Fort Lauderdale, let's say, or whatever, who knows. Um, they were hiring and you're just like, yeah, I just applied. Okay, got it. So then you did. It's a job, right? And then you just kind of figure it out along the way. And then there are the power-hungry people. They're the ones who just feel like, yeah, I, I just, you just want to, you know, whatever. I don't know, maybe they, they're men with really, who are uh, insecure about the size of their sexual organs or what, who knows what, or women who are, insecure about being a woman or food no I don't know or people who got their lunch stolen in high school like I have no idea but the idea is that you know you you just take that out on other people and you want to you wear the badge and you got the gun and you just want to be that jerk right and so unfortunately what happens is it doesn't take you know you see Connor said it really well like you, you so like, it's like every cop you've experienced isn't like that but the ones that, when you do experience some they then taint the entire picture, right? Like if you take one sociology class and the sociology professor is, you know, a, a jerk, then you're going to just attribute that to sociology. That's just what you do. That's what we do. That's how it operates, right? So you're like, okay. Um, but the question is, how many are in the different categories? I mean, for me, from my experience, I'm also a firefighter back home. Uh -huh. So I work very closely with the police uh -huh. in my county and just in Long Island in general. So majority of the time, those kinds of cops, I really see them as social workers with guns, but they don't really rely on their guns unless they have to. Yep, yep, yep. There's, there is a few that are power hungry, but there's not really the ones that are just, it's my job, I just come here nine to five to get my check. It's either I see people that are like the three of us yep. that know what they want to do, and how they want to help society, or there's just a very few that are jerks. Yeah, got you. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised about the middle one, but I, I just have met more and more of those, right? Who they came out of the military, they didn't know what else to do, and there's ah, well, I just applied, right? Okay. Um, what would you say? What would? What, what do you think your dad would say about this? How? What percentage are jerks? Um, I feel like. Like, how often do you hear that? Yeah, um, I don't think I really hear that often, but, like, just taking it from my own experience, like, especially in our area, we have those cops that everybody knows because they're known for pulling, like, every person over. Like, we have one cop that's known for pulling everybody home from school. And, like, they're known for being, like, a jerk, if you want, if you want to say that. Like, you never get away with the ticket. Um, and then even, like, from my own experience, I've been pulled over in our area and I've almost like received some of that attitude and then I say who I am like that my dad's a police officer and the whole demeanor changes mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I think definitely the power can sometimes come in which is really troubling right like I find it really troubling that cops like that you would not be treated fairly as fairly as I would just because your father's a cop right but then I think well yeah but I guess if if you, if you were the daughter of my colleague in sociology, I would just look at you differently, you know what I mean? Because, oh, you're my friend's daughter. So, like, okay. So, I guess that's kind of how life is, you know what I mean? But it's a little bit unsettling. You know, don't do that when you're a cop. Treat everyone equally.